Hello, this is Dr. Brown. In this video, we're going to look at the derivatives of inverse functions and also look at the relationship between the derivative of a function and its inverse function. And also in this video, we're going to look at the derivative of logarithmic functions. And we're also going to go back and look at the derivative of the exponential function, a to the x. You will recall that we already know that d dx of e to the x is equal to e to the x. But now we're going to, uh, towards the end of the video, look at the derivative of a to the x, where a is a uh, general base and not necessarily e. first thing I wanted to do was do a quick review of uh, inverse function. First of all, all functions don't have an inverse function, but a function of x that has an inverse function must pass the horizontal line test. We'll illustrate that in a moment. Uh, I'm sure you remember that from college algebra. Also, the graph of the inverse function of x may be constructed by interchanging x and y in the graph of the original function, f of x. And then we're going to calculate a few inverse functions. And I hope you remember that the way to do this is to write down the function y equal f of x to then interchange x and y and then solve for y. And the solution for y will be the inverse function itself. Now here are two functions. One has an inverse and one does not. The one on the left does ha have an inverse. It passes the horizontal line test, as you can see throughout the graph. It passes a horizontal line test. However, the function on the right does not have an inverse because there is a certain area here where um, a horizontal line intersects the uh, graph at more than one point. So this has no inverse. Now I would like you to look at how we would picture the graph of a of the uh, a function and also its inverse. On the left hand side we have a function y equal f of x and it passes a horizontal line test and so it does have an inverse and a quick way to envision what this inverse would look like would be able to would be to to rotate uh, the x-axis up to where the y-axis is and then put the y-axis where the x-axis is keeping the graph itself uh, of course attached to the Cartesian coordinates and see where that graph goes uh, once you do that, you'll see you have the old y-axis now becomes the new x-axis, and the old x-axis becomes the new y-axis. All the points stay where they were, and this function now, y is equal to the inverse function of x. And now you can look at a point A. on the graph and its y value b and b. This point corresponds to the point x equal b and y equal a. And so these two points are what we call corresponding points. And um, after we calculate the inverse uh, function of a couple of functions, we're going to determine what the relationship is 
between the slope of the tangent line of the original function and the slope of the tangent line at the corresponding point. First of all, let's calculate the inverse function for a linear function. Following the procedure we talked about, we write down that y is equal to 2x minus 2. We interchange x and y. And now we solve for y by solving for 2y equals x plus 2. And therefore, y is equal to x plus 2 over 2. And so the inverse function of x is equal to x plus 2 over 2. Now, uh, let's look at um, the cube root function plus 1. Uh, write down y equals the cube root of x plus 1. Interchange x and y, and we get x equal the cube root of y plus 1. We can write and isolate the cube root of y is equal to x minus 1. And then we will cube both sides. And cubing the cube root of y just gives us back y. So y is equal to x minus 1 cubed. So we can say that the inverse function is equal to x minus 1 cubed. We're going to graph this function um, and the original function in another illustration in just a moment. First, let's look at... Uh, the inverse function here and the original function. Um, one thing um, I want to take a look at is we have y equal f of x and at the point A and B, I drew the tangent line. <coughs> and um, we can look and see what the slope of the tangent line would be by drawing a little triangle here, which gives us a rise and a run. And notice that uh, ddx of f of x at x equal a, y equal b, is the rise over the run, which is delta y over delta x. Now notice as we interchange the x and y axis and rotated the graph, the uh, tangent line remains the same, um, and the, the tangent line looks exactly the same uh, for the inverse function uh, at the point B and A as it did for the original function at the point A and B. However, look and see what the slope of this tangent line is. The uh, delta y in this triangle gives us the uh, run and the delta x which corresponds to this delta x in the original graph gives us uh, the rise. So um, we know that ddx of the inverse function of x at x equal b and y equal a is equal to the rise over the 1, which is delta x over delta y. But notice that uh, that is equal to 1 over 
ddx of the original function of x at x equal a and y equal b. So we see that the reciprocal, there is a reciprocal relationship here between the derivative of f of x at the point a and b and the derivative of the inverse function uh, at the point b and a. So we have this relationship, the derivative of the inverse function of f of x at the point x equal b and y equal a equals the reciprocal of the derivative of f of x at the point x equal a, y equal b. So if you want to know the derivative of the inverse function at the point x equal b, you calculate the derivative of the original function at the point x equal a and take the reciprocal. So let's illustrate this uh, relationship by doing a couple of calculations. First we want to determine the derivative of y equal the square root of x at the point 4 and 2 and we already know how to do that, but we're going to do it by calculating the derivative of its inverse function y equal x square, not at the point 4 and 2, but at uh, the point 2 and 4. So writing down y equal x square, we get that d dx of x squared is equal to 2x, and um, at x equal 2, this is equal to 4. Therefore, we know that um, ddx of its inverse function, which is the square root of x, at um, x equal 4 and y equal 2, it's going to be one quarter. All we did was take the reciprocal. Now let's confirm that. Let's take y equal the square root of x, which is equal to x to the one half, take its derivative, which is one half x to the minus one half, which is one over two square roots of x, Evaluating that at um, x equal 4 is equal 1 over 2 times the square root of 4, and that is 1 quarter. So that confirms it. This basically illustrates the point that we were making. Let's do one more. Let's calculate the derivative of the function y equal x minus 1 cubed at the point 2 and 1, not by calculating it at that point. If we did that, we'd be calculating the slope of the tangent line that I just drew here. But we're going to find that derivative by calculating the derivative of its inverse the cube root of x plus 1 at the appropriate point, and the appropriate point is going to be 1 and 2. So uh, basically, we are going to be calculating the derivative uh, at the point 1 and 2, which would be this tangent line, and we'll take the reciprocal of that and it should be the reciprocal of the tangent line of y equal x minus 1 cubed. So let's write down y equal the cube root of x plus 1 equals x to the 1 third power plus 1 dy dx 
equals one third x to the minus two thirds power which is equal to one over three x to the two thirds power and so dy dx at x equal one is equal to one over three times one to the two thirds power which is one third so we conclude that ddx of um, x minus 1 cube at x equal 2 is going to be the reciprocal of this which will be 3 and yes if you take ddx of x minus 1 cubed is equal to 3 times x minus 1 squared evaluate this um, at x equal 2 and you'll get 3 so that again confirms for this example that the reciprocal of the inverse function at a given point a and b is equal to the reciprocal uh, of the original function derivative at the point uh, b and a just switch the points now we're getting ready to calculate some derivatives of uh, logarithmic functions and so I wanted to remind you of some uh, logarithmic properties uh, that you learn back in college algebra. The first is that log to the base b of two numbers, x times y, you've got the product of two numbers. The logarithm of that to the base b is a logarithm of the first to the base b plus the logarithm of the second to the base b. Also, if you are taking the logarithm of a quotient, the logarithm of x over y is equal to the logarithm of x to the base b minus the logarithm of y to the base b. And then if you want to take the logarithm of x to the ba uh, base b of x to the nth power, it's just going to be n times log of x to the base b. And there is one more relationship I wanted to mention and it's called the change of base formula very important uh, relationship that says if you want to take the log of any number to the base b and this might be a base that you don't have in your calculator that all you have to do is calculate the logarithm to the base e or ln of x and divide it by ln of b. This could be easily done on your calculator or you could take the log of x to the base 10 which is also on your calculator and divide by log to the base 10 of b either one of these will work I usually use LN and so now we're ready to take the derivative of LN of X um, if we write Y equal LN of X and recall that LN of X and E to the X are inverses of one another. Now you'll also recall that y equal l of x means <coughs> because of the definition of the logarithm that x is equal to e to the y. Now we're going to use implicit differentiation. We're going to take ddx of x 
equals d dx of e to the y. Now, d dx of x is just 1. d dx of e to the y is e to the y. But because y is not plain old x, we have to multiply by dy dx. Chain rule. So now dy dx can be solved for, and it's 1 over e to the y. But recall that e to the y was x, so this is 1 over x. So d dx of ln of x is 1 over x. Very simple formula for the derivative of the natural logarithm function. Next, we're going to um, calculate a couple of uh, derivatives of logarithmic functions. First, we have ln of 2x, which is going to be using the formula 1 over 2x. But since 2x is not plain old x, we need to take d dx of 2x, which is going to be 1 over 2x times 2. And so the answer is 1 over x. Second example is d dx of ln of x squared plus 3 is going to be 1 over x squared plus 3. But because this is not plain old x, we're going to take the derivative with respect to x of x squared plus 3, which is 2x. So we'll have 2x over x squared plus 3. <clears throat> now we're going to take the derivative of a the x where a is not equal to e. You will remember that d dx of e the x of the natural base um, exponential function is just itself d dx of e to the x is e to the x. But now that we know the chain rule, we can use our abilities to, uh, with the chain rule and our knowledge of the derivative e to the x uh, to calculate uh, the derivative of a to the x where a is any base. So let's write down y equal a to the x. And we're going to write a the x slightly differently. It looks maybe convoluted to you, but we can write it as e to the ln of a to the x. Notice that e to the ln of anything equals anything. So, since a to the x is e to the ln of a to the x, Using the fact that um, ln of a to the n is equal to n ln of a, this x is like the uh, exponent. This can be written as e to the x ln of a. So now we have an exponential function. Um, e to the x ln of a, where ln of a is just a constant. So now writing y equals e to the x ln of a, we can take d uh, dx of a to the x now is equal to d dx of e to the x ln of a. This is um, an e to the x uh, function, and this derivative is going to be e to the x ln of a times d dx of x ln of a, which is not, of course, plain old x. So taking that derivative with the chain rule, this derivative is going to be ln of a, so we're going to get e to the x ln of a times ln of a.
Now, if you look up there, e to the x, ln of a is a to the x. So d dx of a to the x is a to the x times ln of a. So the derivative of a to the x is not itself like uh, e to the x is the derivative of itself. You have to multiply by ln of a. So now we have one more derivative formula that uh, we're going to be using in our calculus course. Now, we know that ddx of ln of a, or ln of x, is equal to 1 over x. But now we want to take the derivative uh, log of x to the base a. So ddx a blog of x to the base a is ddx using the change of base formula which we just talked about log of x to the base a is ln of x over ln of a and this is equal to 1 over ln of a times ddx of ln of x, and we know ddx of ln of x is 1 over x, so we get 1 over x ln of a. So ddx of log of x to the base a is 1 over x times ln of a. Now we're going to finish off this video by illustrating a concept called logarithmic differentiation. And we're going to use some, some of the logarithmic uh, properties that we talked about. If you had this function, which looks pretty messy, and wanted to take its derivative, you would have to use the quotient rule, the product rule, the chain rule. But we're going to look at a new way of doing this. We're going to take ln of y, take ln of both sides, as ln of x squared plus 1, x plus 3 to the 1 half power all divided by x minus 1. But notice that um, using the properties of logarithms, that's going to be ln of x squared plus 1 plus ln of x plus 3 to the 1 half minus ln of x minus 1, just using the uh, property of the logarithm of a product and a quotient. Now this can be written as ln of x squared plus 1. This can be written as 1 half ln of x plus 3. And this is minus ln of x minus 1. Now ln of y, we're going to take the derivative respect to x of both sides. ddx of ln of y is just going to be 1 over y dy dx. ddx of this side is going to be 2x over x squared plus 1. ddx of the second term is 1 half 1 over x plus 3. And ddx of the last term is minus 1 over x minus 1. Now notice then that dy dx 
is going to be, I'm going to multiply both sides by y. And so I get dy dx is equal to y times 2x over x squared plus 1 plus 1 half 1 over x plus 3 minus 1 over x minus 1. But we know what y is. y is this term. It's a little messy, but we can certainly write it down. And while we do this, and after we do this, we have the uh, derivative of this very complex function. And we didn't have to use the quotient rule or the product rule uh, here I'm just multiplying 2 times x plus 3 then minus 1 over x minus 1 so there is a derivative of a very complicated function and this logarithmic differentiation um, strategy made it easier for us uh, so the idea is to take ln of both sides and then use logarithmic properties to simplify things. And the last two things we're going to do is find dy dx if y is equal to the square root of x times x plus 1 using logarithmic differentiation. We take ln of y equal to ln of the square root of x times x plus 1 equal ln of x times x plus 1 uh, to the 1 half power. And um, ln of y is in 1 half ln of x x plus ln of x plus 1. Since this was a product, we can break that up into ln of x plus ln of x plus 1. So now we're ready to take ddx of ln of y, which is 1 over y dy dx is equal to 1 half times 1 over x, the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x, and the derivative of ln of x plus 1 is 1 over x plus 1. And so dy dx is going to be multiplying both sides by y. We get y over 2 times 1 over x plus 1 over x plus 1. And substituting what y was, we get the square root of x times x plus 1 divided by 2 times 1 over x plus 1 over x plus 1. And that is today's video.